it's your misfortune and not my own. Hippie-tie-i-o, get along, you little dog. You know that the ferry will be your new home. And now for the adventures of Lightning Jim. <laughs> hey, fellas, look who's here. Evening, stranger. I reckon if that badge means anything, you're a United States Marshal. I am. You looking for somebody, Marshal? You got any particular place you'd like me to stick this notice up? What is it? Just a notice given the bounties on the men, dead or alive, whose names are on this list. Now, what's the idea of coming in here to tack your notice up, Marshal? There's plenty of other places in town. Seems like a good idea to me and a good place. I don't want no notices like that tacked in here. They don't add none to the gaiety, and the casino here aims to take game. You're on the side of law and order, ain't you, Barney? Certainly I am, but this here notice is... It's just what it says it is. I hope nobody tears it down. That'd mean trouble. See you later, Barney. Right between the shoulder blades. Reckon you won't see me again, Marshal, or anyone else. The stories of the men who brought law and order to the Old West are chronicles of courage and daring. They are as much a national heritage as the deeds of any men in the history of our country. Men like Wild Bill Hickok, Buffalo Bill Cody, Davy Crockett, Wyatt Earp, and Bat Masterson. The list is a long one. And of such caliber were United States Marshal Lightning Jim Whipple and his deputy Whitey Larson. We now find them discussing a dangerous assignment with their superior, the Attorney General. Lightning, Whitey, what I'm asking you two men to do now isn't exactly according to law. <laughs> Well, Mr. Attorney General, I reckon we've had to make a few sachets before that wasn't uh, exactly on the books. Uh, you uh, me, uh, well, I don't read so good anyway. Uh, you know as much about Correa as I do. The cesspool of the border, the sinkhole, the worst town in the United States. Yeah, reckon there ain't a killer at large who ain't hit out in Correa at some time or another. Why don't the decent folks around there do something about Big Barney? Because there aren't any decent people in a position to do anything. Most of the population is Mexican. They're good people, all right. But they're not the type to try to buck Big Barney and his band of murdering Lobos. And the uh, last marshal you sent down there didn't come back? No. But the reward notices he carried did come back. They were mailed back to us from Correo. So, Big Barney and his men think they can challenge the United States government, huh? Lightning, I want you and Whitey to go down there and clean up Correo. I want you to wipe Barney and his buzzards off the map. They think they're tough. I want you to be tougher. I want you to show them and anybody else who's interested that United States Marshals are just a little too tough for anybody to challenge and get away with it. Well, maybe there ain't no use to send both of us down there. Maybe yes, one of us is enough. <laughs> Listen to the Swedish cyclone. Reckon he'd like to take the whole town on, single-handed, Go eh? and with the other hand tied behind me. What you think of that? I don't care how you do it as long as it's done. You're to use your own judgment, and don't be afraid to shoot. In other words, Mr. Attorney General, you're dependent on the judgment of our gun. <laughs> oh, the judgment, the Colonel Colt. Well, one thing's sure, there ain't no appeal from a judgment of that kind. <laughs> Whitey is right. There is no appeal from the judgment of Colonel Colt, which was the Westerners' way of referring to the Colt six-shooter or six-gun. 
So Lightning Jim and Whitey start out on their assignment, one which was virtual suicide. But they do not seem to be greatly concerned. In fact, as they're about five miles from their destination, the border town of Correo, the worst town in the United States, Whitey's only complaint is the rapid pace set by Lightning Jim and his big black horse, Thunder. Easy, boy, easy, Thunder. Mm. Come on, boy. I tell you, a few more days riding like we've done, and I'd be worn off to my belt. <laughs> well, this ain't been exactly my idea of a pleasure joint, Whitey. But anyway, I reckon we're getting pretty close to Correo now. You say you got any plans, Lightning? I mean, you got any particular idea worked out for cleaning up on them slick years? Well, Whitey, when you step into a den of sidewinders, about the only good idea is to shoot and shoot fast. Lightning, look over there. Where? Oh, it's fire. Looks like a bad one, all right. Gee, I reckon we ought to go over and see if we could do something. Yeah, maybe so. Sounded like a woman screaming. Come on, Whitey. Let's ride. Nobody could uh, put that fire out. It uh, looks like the horse will fall in in a couple of minutes. Yeah, there's some horses there, see? They're just starting off. Lightning, there's the girl. Yeah. Look, she's tied to the saddle. I see, all right. Come on, Thunder. Faster, boy. Faster. Yeah, they turn the fight. Well, give it to him, then. Watch out for the girl. Go. There's one down. There's another one. That third gas is getting away. Reckon we'll pick him up later. Yo, but he left the girl. Oh, Thunder. Oh, boy. Steady now. Steady. Miss. You all right? It's dead. Just a minute now. Uh, You're safe. The yellow belly. Sleep in a young girl this way. Now then, miss. Tell me what happened. Oh, senor. You came in time to help me with my father. No, 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 oh, no. no. Just, just take it easy now. Me and my partner here, yeah, well, never we can help. Oh, nobody can help. Nobody. Big Donnie is bad. Those men were his men. Well, two of them ain't going to bother nobody no more. But the other one got away. He rode to town. He will tell Bonnie about you, oh, too. And now, then... miss, if you would just kind of help us out a little, uh, what was the trouble about? They came today, those three, to take me to Bonnie for dance hall Barney, girls. Huh? That's the only way he can get his girls by far. My people, we are not trained to be the gunfighters. We wish to live in peace, yeah, but... You spoke about your father, Miss... Uh... Uh, my name is Dolores. Huh? Dolores Sanchez. My father... My father would protect me from the tree. So they kill him and set fire to the house. You mean they shot him down in cold blood? You see, he had no gun. We cannot get guns to protect ourselves, senor. Body men search us and take away all our guns. That sounds like you and me will have to make ours work overtime, Whitey. Yo, that's just what I was thinking, too. But you must not ride down to Correo, senor. They will be watching for you. They will kill you. The one who got away, Lige, he has called. He will recognize you. Yeah, well, I hope he does. We'll find him and settle a little score with him. But you, any place around here you can go to be safe? Si, senor, I have a cousin in Correo, in the Mexican quarter. Jose, he is a good man. He will take me in. I see it's a back way to his place, Dolores, so you won't be seen getting into town. Si, senor. I know trails that will bring me there. But you, you must not go into town. You will not last long against Dick Downey and his murderers. They will kill you if they have to shoot you in the back. Yeah, well, then we won't turn our backs on them. Come on, Dolores, you lead the way. <laughs> About six o'clock that evening, Lightning Jim and Whitey are just entering the casino. Hotel, restaurant, tavern, and dance hall run by Big Barney. They've left Dolores with Jose Sanchez, her cousin, promising to return later. They do not believe that they were seen entering the Mexican quarter with the girl, but they know that Lige will be waiting for them in the casino, along with the rest of Barney's vicious murderers. Uh, they've been expecting us. I can tell that. Lightning, they're going to start something. Yeah, don't let nobody get back here, Whitey. Keep to the wall. Uh, uh, why don't you look where you're going? Bumping into people ain't healthy around here. Sir. I didn't bump into you. You just got in my way. Yeah, I got in your way, huh? Maybe you think you own this spot. Go on, move aside. If there ain't room for both of us here, guess I'll have to remove you. Yeah, hey, I'll teach you from a pot. Nobody can do that to Manfold. I'll teach you. Did you hurt your hand, Gim? No. He wasn't really hard. Can you step over him all right? Don't be particular where you put your feet. 
Anybody want to claim this dead weight? You handled your miss pretty quick, stranger. Doc Manfold here is considered a pretty dangerous man to tangle with. Yeah? Well, that's plumb surprising. He don't look dangerous to me. What do you think, Whitey? Well, uh, looking at him right now, he, he, he's about as dangerous as a chicken that's already cooked. Even chickens can be poisoned, uh, some people. What's your business here, stranger? Oh, just passing through. Wanted to room in a meal. Any objection? None at all. You can have the first room to the right of the head of the stairs. That ain't occupied now. Hey, do we uh, just go on upstairs? Do it yourself. But I'll take $10 a piece first. Yeah, is that a house rule to pay in advance? Not always. But in your case, well, uh, you seem to be looking for trouble. Something might happen to you so you wouldn't be here in the morning. So uh, I'll take my money in advance. <laughs> All right. Here's your money. And don't worry none about our not being here in the morning. Come along, Whitey. Hmm. Hey, hey, why didn't you give me the sign to plug them two polecats for, huh? Because I didn't want to cheat Dart here out of the pleasure. Yeah, I'll take those two who would kick the pot. Yeah, I wish they never stuck their noses around. If you didn't do so good with a big one, they don't seem to scare easy. Ah, uh, hit me when I wasn't looking. But I'll get him. I'll get both of them. You betcha, Dart. Just a minute now. Listen. Those two men aren't to leave here alive. You understand that? You think they're law dogs, Bonnie? No, they're just a couple of cowhands drifting around looking for trouble. They think they're tough. <laughs> Taking Dolores Sanchez away from three of my men this afternoon. Killing two and then having nerve enough to show their faces in town. Nobody can stand up the big Bonnie that way. Right, it might be a good idea not to kill them too soon. Hey, how about teaching them a lesson first, huh? Or to take them apart in pieces? That's it. And let me do the taking apart. How about it, huh? The job's yours if you're big enough. But get them. And get them permanent. A jigger don't live what can cut a rusty like that on Big Barney. Hey, Ward. Uh, I just seen Dolores Sanchez down in Mextown with her cousin Jose. I was looking around like you told me to, and I seen her through the window. You sure it was her? Dead sure of it, Ward. Good. Larry, you and Fag go down and get her. Right. And bring the girl back here. I'll show those two gun toters that I get what I go after. What happens to Lightning Jim, Whitey, and the Mexican girl, Dolores, will be told in part two of the adventures of Lightning Jim, which follows immediately. And now for part two of the adventures of Lightning Jim. Big Barney has turned the little border town of Correo into a rendezvous for men wanted by the law for any and all crimes. He's stripped the Mexican population of all guns, and his insane desire for power has led him to defy the government itself. Lightning Jim and Whitey have been sent to clean up the town by guns and violence if necessary. On the road leading into Correo, they rescue Dolores Sanchez, who is being brought to Big Barney for his dance hall. But Big Barney, learning that Dolores has been taken decides that he's going to send men after her. While Lige and Fag are on their way to get Dolores, Lightning Jim and Whitey, upstairs in the hotel bedroom, are talking over the situation. Yeah, with all those skunks below, it uh, seems like a fella can't breathe real good, no pair. You know, Whitey, I'm worried about Dolores. Dolores? Uh, we took her to Jose, her costume. Yeah, I know. If Barney wanted Dolores bad enough to send out three men, 
He ain't giving up, you see. Oh, but he, he don't know that she's here in town. Yeah, maybe not. He'll make it his business to find out and find out quick. Let's get over there. Get Jose to take her out and hide her someplace. We get things lined up here. Yo, or else until we get lined up ourselves. I tell you, like, we get in all right, but I'm not so sure about getting out. Well, let's see how the land lays. See nothing down below like I thought. Too early yet for the boys down below to start anything with us. We'll wait till later for that. So, uh, if you get out the window, uh, go see Jose and sneak back in without them knowing nothing about it. That's the idea, Whitey, if it works. Come on. Jose, those two men had such braveness I have never seen before. They were not even afraid when they rode into bullets. But they would go to Correo to the casino. Not or they would be killed. Big Barney will never let them leave the town alive. Oh, somehow I think you are wrong, Jose. Somehow I think those two men would... What is that? Open up, sir. He ain't got no fancy gun to deserve out now. Open up! Dolores. Big Barney, it's on me out, Jose. Jose, what shall we do? I have a knife, Dolores. You get behind me. I will do what I can. wanted to make it hard for us, didn't you? Yeah. Well, that's going to cost you, Jose. Oh, do not hurt him. He did nothing. I will come with you, but do not hurt my cousin. Be still, Dolores. Do not humble yourself to beg from these bristleback pigs. Pigs, are we? Oh, 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 what While you... Barney takes care of you, Dolores. It wasn't hollered that certain. Nobody saw us leave, Whitey. No, I hope not, Lightning. See, these horses say they all look alike to me. Yeah, everybody turns in early around here. Yeah. Nobody on the streets. No lights in the houses? Uh, I guess it's safer that way. See, see there. That's the horse. Ain't the lightning? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Come on. We told him we'd knock three times slow. Lightning? The door's open. Yeah. Lock's been busted. Looks like it's been shot off. So Big Barney did find this place then. Well, come on. Jose. Dolores. Oh, Senores, for the love of heaven, senors, help me. I am bleeding to death. Whitey, it's Jose. Uh, you, you come too late. She's gone. They have taken a few minutes past. They shoot me and keep me here to die. Lightning, them devils got to be blasted off the earth. You're all right there, Whitey. There ain't no other way to deal with them. Get some water and find the sheep someplace. You got to get Jose fixed up. No, no, not me. Get the Lord. Save her, senores. It is too late for me. But for her, you must try. We'll try, all right. But hurry with that water, Whitey. Uh, here she is, boss. Quiet as a mouse, too. Well, take the gag off now. It won't do any good to yell anymore. Welcome to the casino, Dolores. I will, I will kill you. I will kill yeah, myself. Yeah, I... yeah, you're going to do a lot, but you ain't going to do none of them. So calm down and get acquainted with your new home. Now, to me, you are not afraid of you. They have saved me once. They will save me again. Yeah, it's a good one, that is. You reckon them two party cowhands is going to tackle a whole gang of us? They are not afraid of all of you. They are men, real men, not like you. <laughs> You'll have to learn to keep your trap closed around here. You talk too much. And as for your handsome heroes, they're upstairs right now and they can't get out until we carry them out. Yeah, what we do know like that? I reckon we better get back in our bedroom and try to find out where they got Dolores. Quiet, look. Look there. Look under our window. 
you know, dead feller smoking up and down. He's scored in a room. Yeah. But we ain't there. Had that's a good joke. We flew the coop before they put the guard on. Yeah, but that ain't so funny, Whitey. That's the best way to get back in. There's too many of them in front. You'd never get in if you tried it that way. Yeah, I tell you. I sneak up the side there. When I'm close enough, you whistle loud enough to make the feller turn over this way. I get you, Whitey. Go ahead. But be quiet. We don't want to start any shooting yet. That you, Light? What's the bill? Yo, I got him, Lightning. Good. Good. What is See them packing boxes over there? Hey, yo. Help me tote a couple of them over. Yo. Hey, yo. Easy. I'll take another one. Yo. Now we can get back in the room easy. Yo, very well. What about this hombre? Yeah, what we do with him? Take him along. Tie him up in the room. That's the best place for him. Yeah. Get him up on top of this top box. Oh, he, he's here. We. Yeah. Uh, I'll get in the window and then you have to lift him up. Yeah. Oh. All right, buddy. Let him go. All right. Yeah. Come on, buddy. Give me a hand, quick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there we were back again. Yeah. Hey, this is the same galoot I had to knock down earlier in the evening. Yeah. Oh. What happened? Where? Keep still, unless you want another cloud on the head. Yeah, you. Fix me up a gag, Whitey. And don't be too gentle about it. This warthog seems to need a lesson in man. Yeah, that's true. Go ahead. But you can't get out of here alive. The boss, give order. You'll be still in the Hades before the night's over. And when you do, I'll tell you that. Oh, oh, no. Well, that's one way of stopping the conversation that's getting on my nerves. Well, get your nerves in shape, Whitey. Because here we go. Lightning, you mean you, you're going to walk right down there and shoot that out with him? I don't see no better way, do you, Whitey? No, I guess there ain't no better way. We was told to use our six guns if we had to. And I guess we have to. We'll decide each other. Like we've done for years now. That makes me feel a lot better, Whitey. You all me too, Lightning. You... Well, you... One man shaking the hands with me. Yes, for the luck. No. Of course not. Good luck, Whitey. Good luck, Lathan. Down below in the casino. Nine men are waiting for the orders of Big Barney, who is still in his inner office. They're drinking and gambling and wondering what new tortures Barney will devise for the two strangers who have aroused his anger. And down the stairs on cat feet, testing each step before venturing any further, come Lightning Jim and Whitey. Two men against nine. Two United States Marshals with orders to clean up a bad town in the only way it can be done. Softly they cross the hall and pause for a moment just outside the door. They look at each other for a second, and Lightning Jim says, Remember, both of us in at the same time, then jump sideways. We'll be against the wall that way. You're Lightning. Well, come on. And with almost a single movement, the two men spring through the door. Yeah. <laughs> I understand Big Barney has give orders to get me and my partner. Well, here we are. Who's going to start carrying out his order? Five men are sitting around one table, their hands hidden. Three more are standing at the back with drinks in their hands. All eyes are turned on the two men facing them. And for an almost endless second, there's a silence filled with foreboding and evil. And then in a flash, Pag reached for his gun. <laughs> but at the same time, lightning and white double hands in the hammer of their coat drop. Sag is dead, a bullet through his chest. One other man lies bleeding on the floor, but the other seven have flung themselves under tables, shooting as they move. Lightning Jim has dropped to one knee, twisting as he fires. The side of his face is caught from a bullet, but one more man is down. While on the other side, Whitey, solid, motionless except for his hands, peers through the smoke and shoots live, just as live reached for a shotgun lying on the bar. With a crash, the big kerosene lantern suspended from the ceiling falls. 
Flames licked at the floor, flickered hungrily at the clothes of the fallen men. Smoke was so thick that Lightning Jim choked and flung himself on the floor as he reloaded. But Whitey suddenly pitched straight forward, his gun sliding to the floor. Whitey! Whitey, boy! And Lightning Jim found himself alone, the only man on his feet. Then through the smoke-filled room, leaping into blaze now from the smashed lantern, Lightning Jim, his left arm dangling, reeled on his feet toward the office door of Big Barney. Come on out, Barney. I got you trapped. It's you or me. Come on out, you stinking polecat. And in the doorway stands Big Barney, protected by the body of Dolores Sanchez. With one arm, he holds her in front of him. The other hand holds a gun. I'm going out of here. And if you make one move, I'll kill the girl. But Dolores, bending swiftly with sudden strength, bites hard into Barney's ah. wrist. With a startled yell, he drops his gun. You she double! I'll kill you for that! But as Barney strikes Dolores, hurling her to the blazing floor, Jim leaps at him, dropping his own gun. And the two men sway together across the burning, littered floor. Jim's strength is gone. He stumbles, falls. And Barney, snatching up a fallen gun, aims it at lightning, when suddenly a shot comes from the doorway, and Barney pitches forward on the floor. Lightning, lightning, now you hurt, Pat. Whitey, Whitey boy, I thought you was a goner. Sure, I got one in the head, but he uh, just knocked me off the gift. Well, let's get Dolores out of here. No, this place is burning up, Lightning. Well, they say fire burns clean, and we were told to clean up this town. Sure. And the thing just cleaned up no lightning. And so ends another thrilling adventure in the lives of those two famous marshals, Lightning Jim Whipple and Whitey Larson. Mm.